Welcome back to another video. As you know, these videos are for the Christians, the Stoics, those who have stumbled upon the red pill, and for my son. Uh, if I'm not around one day, I want him to be able to find these videos and hear my voice and learn my lessons. Okay. I appreciate you guys um, asking me questions and asking me to do response videos. If I get tons of requests like that, I will never run out of content and I will always have something to show and share with you guys at 7 in the morning Pacific time every single day. I got a response today and I knew immediately that I could jump right into this video because I have so much experience and so much to share about it. Hopefully this doesn't go on too long. But we got a question from a comment where did it go where did it go can you oh no sorry here we go great video i've been struggling with weed smoking blunts almost every single day since middle school i'm turning 20 soon and have to change my ways this helped a lot thanks um you know what i'm like literally not being asked to do anything <laughs> it's definitely not a request or a response i'm just literally taking this comment and deciding that I need to do a video because I am 34 and I did not stop smoking weed until maybe about a year and a half ago seriously um, the beginning for me was 14 ninth grade so I guess that was 1999 I was in high school I was a freshman I had super low self-esteem and some of the kids in my class that I wanted to impress, honestly, were smoking weed at lunchtime. And they offered me some, and for the first few weeks I turned it down. Uh, you know, drugs are bad and all that, just kind of knowing that. But gave in to the peer pressure eventually. And it's so funny because I totally remember the D.A.R.E. program from when I was 10, four years ago in the fifth grade. And they said peer pressure is the number one thing that's going to get you started on drugs, and they were totally right. Um, anyway, smoked weed for the first time in the ninth grade. Uh, I smoked from a steam roller, uh, just like a little bit of a bowl that someone packed into a steam roller. It's, if you don't know what that is, it's kind of like a pipe, but it's an actual pipe. Like someone takes a CV pipe, like a, like a plumbing pipe, carves a hole into it, you put your hand over the end of the pipe and you can get a rip like that. Um, coughed, but to be totally honest, didn't really get high the first time, um, which I guess is a lot of people's experience, probably because I didn't inhale very hard. Um, only discovered later, a few times after this, you know, the art of really holding in a weed hit and letting it melt your mind as uh, you're not breathing. Um, but yeah, so smoked for the first time in ninth grade. I think maybe it was only a couple weeks after that that I was buying weed from the very same kid who sold it, who got me on it the first time, almost like that was his mission, right? To get me into becoming a stoner and a reoccurring customer. Uh, and for sure, looking back on it, I got ripped off. Like, I think I paid $20 for almost no weed at all. Um, that's just how it goes. And... <sighs> didn't get too crazy about weed in the ninth grade. Didn't get too crazy about weed in the 10th grade. But by the 11th grade, I became an everyday smoker. Uh, sophomore year or junior year, for sure, I was an everyday smoker. I would smoke in the mornings on my way down to my little part-time job, which was down the hill from where I lived. And I would smoke in the evenings. I would smoke on my breaks from this work. Uh, my parents eventually knew something was going on and searched my backpack and found an empty bag of weed, but still smelling like weed and having little trace amounts of weed leaf in it. There was no question. That's what it was. Got in trouble for that. My parents decided that they needed to take me to a psychologist and um, did the psych psychologist thing in two sessions, right? And yeah, my parents had the money to send me to a psychologist. Um, grateful for it. I don't think it did anything, to be honest, but that's really, it was a really nice gesture on their part. And uh, they loved me, right? So 
I would go into these sessions. One was a family session with my parents where I would sit down and it was a group session and I basically told my dad that, you know, we have problems in our relationship. We'll just leave it at that because it's another, that's like a topic for another video, but I'm sure it has something to do with why I was smoking weed. And then I had my single session where it was like me and the therapist talking about everything that I was going through just without my parents there. Nothing really came from that because I was still smoking. I would show up to these therapy sessions high, but with eye drops in and enough air had flowed over me that I no longer smelled like weed. You know how it is. You want to cover up the fact that you smoked. So like you put in eye drops, you make sure that you've got your car windows down or that you've stayed outside in the fresh air long enough. You maybe turn your shirt inside out or just change it. Like all those little tricks, right? Well, they worked. My parents didn't know I was still high coming to those sessions. Um, eventually came in touch with my friend in school who was in a grade below me, but we went way back. And by junior year, I was selling weed, guys selling it um, and not for profit didn't give a shit about profit I sold it so that I could continue smoking for free and so that I could become popular basically I mean that was kinda like the secondary effect primary effect was to always have an endless supply of weed um, what did this do for me nothing good right so like I was um, I was known as that guy like and people were hitting me up texting me all the time to get weed um, people were all of a sudden hanging out with me and my friends more often because they knew that I would be throwing down a huge nug so that we could roll a blunt, like that comment said, or that we could roll a spliff. We were actually way more into spliffs in high school. Blunts were kind of like maybe once a month there'd be a blunt, but we were spliff people. And uh, people were just hanging around me. And I didn't figure out... It didn't figure it out later, but it's because people knew that I was very loose with my weed and that I would just be like, oh, it's a party. Here's, here's three grams. Roll it up, boys. You know, and like people like, oh, yeah, you know, rubbing their hands like he's going to give us that weed. And uh, people were smoking for free around me, but it did keep customers flowing to me because when they wanted to go home and have their own weed, they would buy that weed from me. Um, you know, at this point, it's good to note that I had basically said, fuck school. And I was just fully focused on video games when I got home, getting high with my friends, and uh, I guess jerking it off at night, you know? There were kids in my grade who had girlfriends who were not virgins, who were experiencing teenage life the way you're supposed to normally experience it. And I was still smoking because, quite honestly, looking back, I was probably afraid to grow up. Smoking weed leaves me in this state of like, I'm still 12. Like, if I smoke weed today as a 34-year-old, I would probably still feel like I was 14. It, like, puts me back in the past in, like, a spiritual and mental way. It doesn't make any sense, but, I mean, even when, a couple years ago when I was smoking, I still felt immature. Um, and then it's that feeling kind of goes away once the weed wears off and you bounce back to reality. And I think maybe for a lot of people and for me, Smoking weed was a way to escape reality, not face the fact that I was becoming a man, not face the fact that I would have to be going to school. I just kept pushing real responsibilities away by getting high all the time and being a fuck-all loser. Um, let's go back to high school. You know, I'm a junior year. I'm selling hella weed. I'm basically the class weed guy. Like, yeah, there were some other weed salespeople in my grade, but... Um, no one was selling as much as I was, and I was definitely the most popular guy doing it at the time. Or I should say, not, <laughs> sorry, I should say I was definitely the most notorious for weed selling. I was not a popular kid. If anything, I was just well known to be stoned all the time. Like me and my friend would literally go out every day at lunch, and instead of eating food, we would smoke weed. Other kids are getting lunch, we would just roll up a joint in the car. Everyone knew it. They basically made fun of us and said we were gay because we hung out all the time together. And it's like, no, we're just really good drug buddies. Um, one day in the, I think it was either the beginning of junior, uh, senior year or the end of junior year or something, uh, my parents found $40 of cash in our mailbox because this was one of the ways that I would get paid for selling weed. I'd, I'd just go outside real quick. I'd put a bag on the mailbox. Someone would pull up, grab the sack, leave cash in it, and drive off. The parents found the cash, gave it to me, and they said, 
don't know what the fuck this is, but if you are selling drugs, stop it now. You are under 18. You are not selling drugs in this house. And uh, if you continue to do this, you could be arrested. You could become a felon. You could go to prison. Our house could be taken away. All sorts of bad stuff is going to happen to your family. Stop this right fucking now. I got that real stern talking to. And yeah, maybe that put me off for like a week. But then I was right back at it. So yeah, another year, year and a half go by. Uh, senior year is about to end. I'm getting a D in English. I am not walking. So there were 450 kids in my class. And I was one of three who did not get the honor of walking on graduation. And if you don't know what that means, that means... You know, you put on your little cap and gown, collect your diploma, and your parents clap because it's like a major milestone, and then you're generally off to college, right, all that stuff. Nope, no walking for me. I did not get to walk. Like I said, one of three kids out of 450 kids who basically fucked up that year and did not get to walk. It's like the biggest dishonor ever to your parents. But um, I was allowed to take a class in summer summer program. Oh, shit. But, you know, even with this second chance I'd been given for graduating high school later, but still getting a high school degree, you know, I was still smoking weed every day. Nothing had changed. I wasn't ashamed of the fact that I wasn't walking until much, much, much later when I realized how bad that was. But, you know, in my mind, hey, man, we were getting high every day, and that's all that mattered. It's just straight drug addiction. Yeah, and marijuana can be like that. I know it sounds crazy, it's not crack, but it can be really addictive. And we got addicted to marijuana. We were smoking blunts every morning before our summer school class, which was the easiest class ever. I mean, seriously. Uh, I basically just had to show up. There wasn't really much to do. We, we would do like in-class assignments. There was never any homework or any kind of studying. We'd be watching movies. It was really just a way to get kids through the system, I guess. Um, now that I look back on it, maybe they didn't want any super seniors. They did everything they could. You ever heard of a super senior? It's someone who doesn't graduate high school and does another year of senior year. I don't know why they ever would, but they do exist. So summer's over. I have a high school diploma, and I'm coasting along into community college, which was always my plan, right? It's not like I wanted to be a loser. I just said, oh, fuck it. I don't need to take the SATs because I'm going to go into community college and then maybe I'll transfer, uh, which, you know, I ended up doing and eventually transferring into a four-year university six years later. It's a two-year plan. It took me six years, but that's a topic for a whole different video. Uh, community college, right? I mean, I'm signed up for like intro-level courses. It is now the fall of 2003. And I have basically shown up for the first day, and that's about it. Hey, cutie. I've shown up for the first day of school, and that's about it. I went and got my books, saw some of the kids that, you know, did well in my high school, but also wanted to go to community college because they were smart and decided they didn't want to blow it in a four-year school right off the bat or waste money or whatever. And, uh, you know... After about the first week, the appeal wore off, and I found myself getting in my car in the morning, going straight to my buddy's house, and waking him up every morning with a blunt. I was so addicted to weed that I would literally skip class every day to go and hang out at my friend's house because he had a house to himself. He was literally 18, and his dad had moved out and gave him a house, like, basically. Um, so that was, like, the cool place to be. And I'd smoke weed every day with those guys. Um, I would never go to class, ever. I remember I, I remember coming back for like a midterm and a final. And I meant in like December of that year. And the final, uh, the professor was like, why are you here? I'm like, well, to take the final. He's like, she's like, dude, come here for a second. Pull me aside. He goes, you haven't shown up to more than like three classes the entire semester. You could ace this final, and you would still get an F in the class. And I was like, oh, okay, that's fair, and like walked away. No shame. I didn't feel bad about it. It's just like, that's how bad of a student I was. I was just wasting time being a fucking jackass. And, here, hang on one second. I'm going to stop the recording for just a second.
I was so accustomed to failing at everything when it came to school back then that it's just another day in the life of my <coughs> foolishness. Just uh, losing out on another six months of no progress in school, but it didn't matter because I was still getting high. Still finding people to sell weed to even though 90% of my clientele had left and gone to college. And uh, yeah, I mean in the mornings, like I said, I'd go wake up my buddy. My buddy was part of like the sailing crew, right? Like he wasn't going to college. He graduated high school with me, but he decided to be in sailing, like um, sailing boats. So that's like a whole culture, right? You go to the yacht club, you're like not getting paid really except for food and measly cash, but you work on boats, you work with other sailors who have businesses. It's like a, it's a whole different culture. Some people call it the sail bumming or being a sail bum. My friends were sail bums. And, um, you know, essentially, <laughs> we'll have to do an audio test on this. We may be re-recording this depending on how loud that uh, kid's toy is. But my buddy, my little boy's playing, so what are you going to do? Um, I... <laughs> I'm going to start this part over. Hey, everyone. I switched to my AirPods to finish this recording out. I'm probably not even halfway through. We'll see. But uh, and the condenser mic is awesome, but it requires me being in front of my computer, and I don't have that ability at the moment. So switch to the AirPods. I know I left off talking about my friends, the sailors, who I used to spend every morning with till about 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and then would drive home stoned as fuck. Um, but basically, I... Um, I would, you know, not go to my college classes. I would literally just go hang out with these guys every morning. And they were using me for a whole different reason. I, for them, they were getting free rides uh, to the sailing place they were. Uh, they were getting free rides to, you know, we're talking 35 mile drive. I would drive them every morning. Um, they would smoke me out. That was the deal. You know what I mean? If I smoke you out, that means they supplied the marijuana and I smoked it. Um, didn't bring any of my own, but that's okay. Um, I remember I was actually buying weed from the brother of one of these guys, and he was ripping me off too. This is the thing with uh, with being a weak beta and people knowing you're not that smart uh, and inexperienced. What they do is they take advantage of you. Now, it didn't happen a lot, but um, for one, I had uh, this guy who was selling me weed in the ninth grade ripping me off on a smaller level. And, you know, by the time I was 18, one of the suppliers that I would get my large amounts of marijuana from was ripping me off by giving me weed that he literally just picked off his plants. So, like, I would buy weed from growers. This guy had a really cool growing operation in his house. At least I thought it was super cool at the time, you know, indoor, hydroponic, super high quality marijuana. But what he was doing is selling it to me before he dried it and cured it. You have to – you can't just smoke marijuana off the plant. You would have you have to, you know, dry it properly by hanging it up somewhere and then curing it in a jar for a few weeks after that. It takes – you know, your weed's really not ready to go for a few weeks after you picked it off the plant. But this guy would sell it to me right off the plant. Why? Because it was so wet from being not dry that it would tip the scales. You know, he was selling me a $300 at the time ounce of wet weed and not dry weed. So the weed, you're getting a, a whole lot less weed because it's wet. It tips the scales. And on top of this... Me and my friends couldn't smoke it. And, you know, we, at the time, I'm like thinking back on it. Were my friends and I too stupid? And I think the answer is yes. Because we, you know, we hadn't grown, we hadn't grown it ourselves. And it wasn't until much later when I was growing it um, that I discovered that he was doing that to me. Because I'd, I'd pick it off the plant and I'd be like, hmm, this reminds me of that weed. And I'd go, oh... He was selling it to me wet. Wow, what a dick. Super long ago, not worth getting any kind of stirring up any kind of shit over at this point. You know, we're talking almost 20 years now. 
Um, he was involved with some people that I don't want to be anywhere around anyway. So, um, basically, yeah, this is, this is what I was doing while I was just, I just graduated high school. Um, but it all kind of came crashing down to an end in the last week of December of 2003. Uh, one night I was hanging out with my friends. Um, by the way, that was an every night thing, right? So before I get into that, you should know that I almost never spent time at home at this point. You know, any, on any given night, I was at my friend's house just down the street from where I lived. Uh, almost 99% of the time you could find me there. Because, frankly, there were situations that kids found themselves in where it was friendlier to be in terms of smoking pot, which was at the time illegal. So not only that, but parents, right? We all lived with our parents more or less, and some parents were okay with it. So the kids whose parents were okay with it, that's where we'd end up, that's where we'd end up going to smoke. So I had one of my best buddies. We would, I would, I mean, I must have spent like, half of my teenage life in his apartment, seriously. Um, and that's where I was the night that I ended up getting arrested. So not, I mean, I'd le- I was leaving from his apartment. So I basically got a call at like midnight. Hey man, can you sell me a sack? Left my friend's house. And the reason I, I, I give this context about where I was is because, you know, we live in the suburb and at 12 o'clock at night, it's 80% chance the headlights that are on behind you are a cop, right? So you're, you're kind of gambling because you're under the influence of marijuana. You've got, and I had weed on me and bags and a scale. It was marijuana for sale without a doubt. And I ended up getting pulled over after making that one last sale to my, my friend, my other friend. I got pulled over, had no idea why. The officer smelled marijuana on me, saw that I was high with my eyes, I guess. That gives them, at least at the time, some legal action, which they are, they have something called probable cause, which allows them to search. At least it did back then. Um, so he gets out, and as soon as they find a hard object in your jacket, they are allowed to open up your pockets. So I get pulled over. They, they pat my jacket that I'm wearing until they find the scale. It's a hard scale, so it makes a sound. And they patted me down. They're great. We're going to open up your pockets. They find like eight or nine separated bags of marijuana in my scale. Boom. Felony possession of marijuana for sale. Arrested. Exactly what my parents had warned me about. Everything my parents had warned me about. It all came crashing down. Man, I think it was just after Christmas in 2004. Um, At this point, you know, my relationship with my parents was not great. They they still suspected that I was doing bad things, but, you know, I had to call them from the county jail that night, and my dad was so angry. Uh, probably one of the hardest phone calls I've ever had to make in my whole life. And uh, my mom, I found out later, told my dad, just let him rot in there, and he's like, no. But he did tell me, you know, this is your one, your one time, right? You get your one free pass with me. After this, I will never bail you out for a crime again. And so I got to get in the car at 8 in the morning. I spent the night in the drunk tank in the county jail. Um, not like a hard story or anything. The guy that was in there with me was, was fine. We both get let out in the morning. Um, I slept on the concrete that night. No, no big deal, but that's how it is. And uh, basically, my parents knew that I was facing prison, and I was facing prison. Um, had a lot of good things going for me, but these, these were felony possession of a substance for sale charges. And uh, my parents enlisted a lawyer. And the lawyer said, the best thing you can do is show the judge that you're already trying to clean up your act and so we can be lenient, so they can be lenient. And so I went into a 28-day rehab program. Yes, drug rehab for weed, for selling weed, for smoking weed, but for weed, 
you know, in there, I met people who are alcoholics, heroin addicts, meth addicts, coke addicts, crack addicts. I was the only guy in there for weed. People had a very weird connotation to that. Like, this is just some rich kid who is trying to beat beat the system out. Not a real drug addict. Whatever. That's fine. They, they can judge. I did the... Uh, 28 day program rehab was actually pretty fun. Not going to lie. Other than all the silly meetings they make you go to, um, the food was delicious. We got, got to spend plenty of time outdoors. Um, the guy that I was in there with, we had like a cabin. I was, I had to share it with another guy. He was a psychopath though. Seriously crazy. And, uh, that was the only part that was a little weird, but got over that, got through that. Then I think I'm here thinking, Oh, that's it. I'm going home. Nope. My parents and the lawyer decided that I need to go into a halfway house, which is kind of like it's, it's a halfway point from going in from from going into rehab to getting back into normal society. It's the halfway point. I guess maybe that's why they call it that. So you go into a house with other drug addicts who hold each other accountable to going to AA meetings, going to NA meetings, Narcotics Anonymous, um, Good people, but you didn't you didn't have your own room. You'd sleep with other guys in the same room, so three beds to a room. Pretty shitty. Um, I did end up getting my first full-time job while I lived there, which was nice because I was able to pay my own rent while I was there. It was like 700 a month for a bed. Um, but uh, finally, by I think June, I was back home. Um living with my folks again, like I had been almost 19 years old now. Um, I did smoke one time, you know, I was clean that whole six months, except for one time I ended up smoking weed and getting caught for it too. Like I thought, Oh, it'd be fine. These halfway, these halfway house guys aren't going to know shit. Nope. Uh, I was, I had like basically missed a house meeting or something. So they're like, oh, he's probably using. And they were actually right. They drug tested me right on the spot. And like, okay, you just tested positive for marijuana. And I was like, yeah, I smoked. So they like made me go home for a couple days. Uh, I even told my mom. Like I remember my, my, my dad was out of town. My brother was out of town. But like my mom was there. And she's like, what are you doing here in like, the middle of the night? And I was like, well, I got kicked out of the halfway house for a few days. I get to go back. But I did smoke weed one time. She was super disappointed. You know, thinking like, wow, man, all this effort we just put into you, you're such a piece of shit. Um, but uh, got out of the halfway house in June. I had my full-time job. I was clean. I wasn't smoking. Like, that was, that was a one-time exception, but it didn't spiral into a, an addictive phase like it usually did. And uh, I was definitely, like, finally getting laid that year, too. That was the year I lost my virginity. And I don't think it's any coincidence that... Me not being high, me not being around porn and jerking off to porn all the time, I just naturally fell into uh, a more confident rhythm, uh, becoming more of a man, asking chicks out with confidence, and ended up asking out two, two different girls that summer who were both just straight nymphomaniacs, for better or for worse. So that was a very sexual summer. Uh, I ended up getting a lot of heat from my mom because I was bringing like one or one woman. I was bringing back, I had like a two girlfriends, right? And I'd bring them back. And my mom just like, you know, still very Christian in her mind. Like, I can't believe you're sleeping with these girls before marriage. You're bringing them here. This is disgusting. I hate this, blah, blah, blah. So like, anyway, I don't want to divulge or diverge. I was finally clean for a really long time. I don't know with the exception of a one-time stint from like the very beginning of 2004 to maybe September or, or October, I was just like, no weed, except for one single time, no weed. And then the best things that ever happened to me happened to me. Got laid, had girlfriends, things that I didn't think I could do, to be honest, before. And smoking pot every day certainly didn't help my self-esteem or my confidence or anything like that. But, 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 it was 2004, and a little law in California where I grew up had been passed not that long before, and everyone was taking advantage of it. It's called Proposition 215, medical marijuana. All of a sudden, doctors were springing up everywhere, and all you needed was $100 and needed to be over 18, 
and you can find a doctor to sign off on a medical marijuana license for you. So, I had a I had a new card that allowed me to smoke legally in the state of California. Sure, there's rules. Like, you still can't go and smoke in your car. You can't smoke on playgrounds, things like that. But you now have this legal shield, and you had access to cannabis clubs, which are now the same. Those same companies have since become the recreational stores, where now you only need to be 21. But before that, you needed a card to get in. But they, they were pretty fun, man. I mean, all of a sudden, you're, you're shopping for weed instead of having to go through a dealer and being at the whims of whatever he has and whatever he wants to call for his price. Um, something to note, I did finally, the court case did end uh, in June. I was, I think, it, or maybe even in May. I was convicted. They, they did reduce my felonies to misdemeanors. So I ended up getting two misdemeanors. They were like lesser charges, but still related to what I had done. And um, got the two misdemeanors, right? They also gave me 10 days in jail. But we had some kind of adult worker program where I was from, so 10 days in jail could be done in the form of community service, which I did. So I never had to go – never had to actually be put back in jail for 10 days. They did have to take me to the jail to process me and then release me instantly. So I didn't have to sit in a cell ever again. But basically, um, I'd, I'd, like, I'd go and pick up trash and clean the ranger cars, like the county rangers. It was actually pretty fun. Spent a lot of time outside doing that community service in a, on a beautiful backcountry road. It's actually really nice. Um, not to digress, but the reason I brought that up is because I got assigned three years probation. And probation's, probation's a big deal. I mean, probation is like, if you fuck up again, you're going straight to fucking jail, no questions asked. So, like, I had a lot of balls to be honest, because I never checked in with my probation officer that this even mattered or that I could do this. But I basically, I just went to probation once in the beginning. I peed in a cup. It tested, po- it tested negative for weed. Then I got a letter in the mail saying, okay, you're done fucking with us. Just be on your best behavior. Don't fuck up or you're, coming, you're going to jail. And what did I do? I'm like, oh, well, that's a free pass to go get a cannabis card. And I did. I got the cannabis card, and I had two separate run-ins with the law within the next two years um, involving marijuana and kept them catching me being sm- being high. And in both cases, they go, hey, you know you're on probation, right? And I go, yeah. And they're like, what, what, what's the meaning of this? Do you want to go back to jail? And I'm like, uh, I have a cannabis card. And they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, here, look, I'm, I'm legal. They're like, does your probation officer know about this? And I go, absolutely. Of course he didn't fucking know. I completely made that up. But they didn't fuck. They didn't mess with it. Like, so I, I had my two run-ins again with the law, and nothing ever came of it. Uh, not that I was selling weed, but I was certainly not supposed to be smoking it either. Still illegal to smoke, and I was on probation. I could have gone to prison for this. Could have gone back to jail for this, a violation of probation. Um... <clears throat> Where is this? Where is this going? You know, I'm like, I think by now it's 2006, 2007. I've still got this full time job. My friends who I went to high school with are starting to graduate college. Uh, they're making real good money. I'm still being a fuck all stoner. And um, basically, um, it just kept going, guys. It kept going. I, I finally got my shit together. Uh, actually, to be totally honest, by taking a break off weed, I think by now I was, I was starting to realize that weed was super, super bad. It, it took me, it took me like a good 10 years to start realizing like, you know what? The best shit always happens to you. Your life always progresses when you're not smoking. So I actually start taking breaks from weed. I have my friends call me, hey, you want to blaze? And I'll be like, no, I don't. I'm, I'm not, I'm not smoking right now. I'm taking a break. Finally got some, some sense of discipline from weed. And, um, yeah, things started going a little bit better when I did that. And I got, I finally got out of community college. I had been on and off community college. I don't want to say that I spent six years trying to get through it, but it did. It was six years from the moment I graduated high school to the moment I got into a four year university. Um, and then two more years from there until I graduated with a bachelor's degree in 2011. 
call it the eight-year plan if you want to call it that. Um, so, still not done. I get out of college. I move in with my buddy into a um, into my first city apartment, the big city near us. And uh, my buddy is a good friend of my friends. He's my friend. And uh, move in. And the fun is we're just having so much fun. Like I'm in college. I'm bringing back some girls every now and then or maybe once. I don't remember. One time, two times. We had a, we had a few fun times with some of the girls from my school, my apartment. Uh, we had other other good drunken city nights. And then I I met this girl. And like I had had girlfriends before. Right. But never never anything this serious. This was like puppy love you know you ever heard that term like or what I mean by that is like we were so stupidly in love with each other we, we both made really really bad choices uh I ended up having this girl move in with me and my roommate um he he got like I think he got a couple hundred bucks a month to just make that financially uh doable like hey if I want to move my girl into my bedroom permanently like you should get some money out of it kind of a thing we worked something out uh and it was cool for a little while uh I ended up leaving, um, which is the stupidest mistake ever. And I know you're probably listening to this video, friend. I, you know, I'm still feeling bad about that, right? I like, I bailed on you, kind of forced you to move out too. So I, I I'm sorry. That part was stupid because that girl was dumb and that relationship was dumb. But it took me like five years to figure that out. Um, she's important and relevant to the story because she was a heavy stoner too, right? So now I've got this puppy love girlfriend who smokes just as much weed as I do. We're smoking multiple joints a day, five days, five, you know, seven days a week, five years living together from the almost the very beginning of the relationship. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Early cohabitation, drug buddy, tons of sex. Guy, yeah, I got that, but wasn't you know wasn't until like 2014 when we break we break up that like actually 2013, right? Uh, t early 2014, early 2014, we break up. Um, my, my life didn't really start getting better until then. Uh, I found the red pill. I started doing self-improvement, started lifting weights a couple years after that, but still smoking weed. Um, still smoking, met a new girl. I mean, after banging 15 chicks between my puppy love girlfriend and the girl I'm with now, who is the mother of my son, I must've been on a a tear in the new city I lived in, went on a, just a spree of online and real life dating and pick up and fun, uh, meaningless, but fun, still high, still drinking occasionally, making good money though, and uh, looking good because I started working out and taking that very seriously, um, but still smoking weed every day, and man, only only stopped a year and a half ago and then the last two years of it right so maybe age 31 to 33 more recently like 2017 to 2019 this technology came out um i don't know how long this had actually been around but i got turned on to this new way of smoking and it was it was the worst um they make these pens i call them a pen i don't know if that's the right way to say it but they look like a pen they're the same size as a pen you would write with and they basically vaporize oil, you know, cannabis, weed, concentrated oil, um, and and they do it instantly. You just pull this thing out of your pocket, you take a puff on it, you blow out a tiny cloud of vapor, and you are higher than ever. It's so concentrated, and not only that, it was super stealth. You can't smell it, um, and super quick and easy. You don't have to pull out a bong. You don't have to make a joint. Like you just pull out this little pen that lasts for a week or two, depending on how often you smoke. And, uh, you just go on about your day. And the problem is it, it made weed so easy and accessible anywhere. Not only could I smoke anytime I wanted to, but anywhere I wanted to smoking at work in the bathroom, like a Coke fiend. Other kids would do it too. It was kind of like a culture. I say kids, we're all adults in our thirties. Uh, all, all, all sorts of other people in the tech companies I worked at would do it too, right? It was like the thing now. Um, but it, it just, it took me over the edge. And now I have to tell you guys, I've used up all the marijuana credits I have left in my life. And I can't smoke anymore. And I don't smoke anymore. 
this shit makes me angry. It turns me into something I don't want to be. And it regresses me mentally and spiritually in so many different ways, which I may have talked about in a previous video. What really got me to stop, though, was me having a kid. I have a 16-month-old now, but what he doesn't know is that I was smoking weed every day up until about his three, his first three months. Like when he was three months old, I started just becoming so irritable and angry that I had to stop. And I don't want to be smoking around. I don't want his dad to be high. I don't want to be missing. I don't want to be missing out on him growing up or having like blurred memory. Because when I try to think back to the last 15 years, there's a lot of gaps in my memory of things, things I did. And there's no doubt about it because I was high. I, I just can't. And that's what has really gotten me to stop is becoming a dad. And I, I've really, I've really stopped guys. I'm like not a stoner anymore. Um, I'm on the longest break of weed I've ever been on. And, uh, yeah, I think it also helped that I became a Christian. Started realizing that uh, when I was high, I wasn't feeling connected to God the way I do now. Like the way I feel now, I feel confident that if someone came in here and killed me, I'd feel I'd be okay. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be scared. Like death is is ready. Like I'm ready for death if it comes whenever. And uh, God, God is there, and we get to go meet God. And then when I smoke weed, it's like, ugh, I don't feel like that anymore. I feel scared. Like, oh, my life is gonna end. And, it just feels really weird. I don't know how to describe it. But yeah, becoming a dad and becoming a Christian, it's, this shit is finally over. So that's really the whole story. I mean, I think between this recording that I just did and the one on the condenser mic a few minutes earlier that you were just listening to, I, this story has probably gone on for 45 minutes. I have no idea. It's, it's long, right? It's really long. Um, and I just don't want you guys... To, to, to find this out when you're in your 30s, just nip this shit in the bud right now. No pun intended. Or pun intended. Fuck it. Nip this shit in the bud right now. You're 20, dude, who's, who commented? Dude, just stop. Just stop now. You have so much time. Oh, man, if I could be 20 again, I would start putting all that stupid amounts of money I spent on weed in a bank and on, in certain accounts and, and on certain – ETFs and stocks and Bitcoin and all sorts of things to get that compounding interest, man. I can't get, I cannot get that 10 years back, but if I could, I would be investing. That's what you should be doing with that money. And that is a huge follow up to my last video, which is all about gra instant gratification and delayed gratification. So you really should stop, you know, hitting your, hitting that weed, bro. And it's, you're just doing instant gratification. What you really need to do is delay gratification. Stop getting high and use the money the right way and use the time to do something else and to build a business or a brand and to, you know, start lifting if you're not lifting. I mean, that's, that's fucking 101 right there, guys. Time to lift weights, all of y'all. If you have a bad back, then don't do certain exercises. If you have bad knees, don't do certain exercises. If you have like cerebral palsy or something and you can't lift weights, then, then don't. Like I'm not, I'm not trying to say kill yourself, but you know, the one thing that most people can do no matter what is bench press. It's really not hard to lie on a bench and uh, push that shit up and down. Squatting and deadlifting, I get, but see if you can at least get it in the gym or, or buy a barbell on a rack and do bench press at home. Like that's, you know, if you're injured and you can't do full workout, at least bench. But I guess that's it. Confessions of an ex-stoner. I finally stopped at age 33, but I really want you guys to do it sooner. Um, my subscribers, if you're 20, if you're 18, you're like, damn, I really should stop smoking. Yeah, you should. You really should. Um, you can function as a stoner. I did. I did function, but barely, right? It's so minimal, minimal, pure minimal functioning. Like, you are so much better than that when you're not high. Quit smoking weed. Confessions of an ex-stoner. See you guys.